taken a while for a 4x4 to appear in this series, but it was fairly inevitable. So let's plunge in with the quintessentially British Range Rover Autobiography Sport, with its 3 litre diesel engine which produces 272 brake horsepower and 0 to 60 in 8 seconds. Now it's all well and good taking this car out onto the open road for several hours to get the feel of it, but this is a very different sort of car. Range Rovers are bought for their use, their practicality. How good a workhorse these cars can be. I mean, yes it's big, it's buxom, it's butch, and it's incredibly powerful, and it does drink its diesel, but are you getting what you pay for inside? First impressions? I would say so. I mean, look at the interior of this car. This is not flash and ostentatious design. This is simple, practical use. Considering this is a fairly decent Range Rover, I'm surprised. I thought the temptation would be there to go for out and out sexy inside appearance. You are here to enjoy the lush beauty of the Range Rover. But no, there is a hint of that. But most of it is functional, it's practical. It's incredibly uncomplicated, and I love the simplicity of it. So many cars have gone way too far beyond the envelope to try and impress its consumer. This doesn't need to. You know it's a Range Rover, therefore you know what it should be capable of doing. So focus on the inner workings of the car and leave the dashboard to the geeks and the nerds of the Nissan culture. This is brilliant. I'll give you an example of the capabilities of the Range Rover Autobiography Sport in terms of practicality. Engine on. Button, by the way. <laughs> Did you see that? It just lifted me into a more comfortable position. That is amazing. It's a wake up and be alert sort of car. It calls you to attention. It's very military. I like that. Then we've got the sat-nav. Now, I cannot stress this enough. I like a sat-nav to be uncomplicated, easy to use, and not over the top. This is perfection. In terms of what it gives you, it doesn't faff about, it doesn't overcomplicate things, and it is incredibly user-friendly. That is one of the best sat-navs in automotive history. And that can be the difference between leaving the car in the showroom and parting with your money and driving it home. But there is one thing that Range Rover has never got wrong, and that is space. I am five foot nine inches tall, and as a result, I have incredibly long and telescopic legs. So I need plenty of leg room in the back. I've got way more leg room than I possibly need, and I've got room for two more like-minded mates. We could all fall asleep on each other, and we wouldn't even notice how cramped we were. It's incredible. And, if I really want to feel a little bit more comfort, I've even got my own heating settings in the back. Range Rover really have thought of everything here. And I have to say, I am incredibly impressed. Do you remember that old adage of, a good boot should be able to fit someone in the back? I could fit two of me in the back here. Pop these seats forward and I've actually got myself a comfy bed. You wouldn't need a caravan if you had this thing. Right, here's a test of ultimate space. Headrests down, pop seats forward. Wait for it folks. If I actually flattened those, I would have enough room to put a mattress in the back here. That is just an incredible use of space. I could genuinely use this as a makeshift hotel room if I really wanted to. Magnificent. I'm sorry Range Rover, I'm sorry I ever offended you. Consider this a do-over. This particular car can boast of being the last great model of the third generation of Range Rovers which have been produced since 1970. Another thing that can't go wrong in a Range Rover is the styling. Apart from the materials and manufacturing processes, the Range Rover has barely evolved in the last 45 years in terms of styling. But then, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. However, this may not be enough to win me over, as I have never, ever been in love with the 4x4. I don't even think it's the 
Range Rover of Range Rover I dislike. It's the whole 4x4 culture I don't like. It's this whole mothers driving their kids to school in a Range Rover, or people buying these Range Rovers because football players have them. What? Where on earth did we have that culture become indoctrinated into British society? I'll buy one because Wayne Rooney has one. David Beckham has one. Do you need one? No! So why are you buying one then? And when did this whole culture of people driving their kids to school in a 4x4 come from? Oh, they're safe. I know they're safe. So is a Ford Focus. So is a Vauxhall Zafira. And yet you have to have a big, brutal 4x4 for driving your kids to school. Unless you live in Pontypridd, it is a useless excuse to say, oh, I need it for driving the kids to school. Where do you live? Leeds, Whittam, Croydon, Swindon. You don't need a 4x4 in these places. You don't, especially if your kids only live three miles maximum away from the school they're actually going to. Get that concept out of your head because it's useless. This car is built for long distance driving and all purpose motoring. So pulling caravans, towing trailers, being a farmer. Okay, so middle-aged rant over. I'm well aware of what this car is supposed to be for. And I've come to the town of Billericay to see if this car has what it takes to win over the universe's most prolific 4x4 hater. May as well be a British car then. I'll tell you what's impressing me most about this car, is that when I'm driving it, it doesn't feel like a 4x4, it feels like a luxury saloon. And that's bonkers, because this is a Range Rover. It's huge, it's massive, it's bulky, it's brutish, it's got an engine the size of Krakatoa, and it's probably got more power. But it's just ridiculously smooth. It's comfortable, it's friendly, it's gentle. I might as well be driving an Audi or a BMW. But this is a Range Rover, a Range Rover. And it just doesn't feel like one. This might have pulled off the greatest magic trick in automotive history. It's one of the world's biggest cars. And yet it feels like I'm driving an Audi TT. I am genuinely and pleasantly surprised by this car. I didn't think it would give me this much of a satisfaction driving it. It's a Range Rover. I should either be bored stiff or driven to madness by it. And I think I've just rewritten my entire outlook on the 4x4 just in this one car. I've never been a fan. I've never been a fan of 4x4s. I don't like them, they're too big. They're pointless in towns as far as I'm concerned. I've never wanted one. And yet I may need to call my wife and tell her that the next car we buy is a Range Rover. And it really would be worth every penny. I could buy this and 10 years down the line, I would still be driving it. I have never been bowled over by a 4x4. I've always looked at them and gone, they're all the same. Ugh. There's nothing nice about any of them. And yet, this one is quickly changing my opinion. Add to the fact that this car is more rapid than you'd think, does 45 miles to the gallon when you're really trying, and has a billion gadgets on it. My conclusion is startling. It's intelligent, it's clever, it's well designed, it's well thought out. Everything is just right. That's really difficult to achieve in a car, particularly for someone like me who hates 4x4s. This is just spot on the money. So, unbelievably, the Range Rover Autobiography Sport has actually gone and done it. The man who has hated 4x4s and everything they stand for on British roads for the last three decades is actually considering calling Land Rover and queuing up to give them my money. Well done, chaps. Top draw.